What is a hash function? Hash functions are used frequently for a variety of different purposes, certainly in encryption as well. And what are the properties of a hash function? So a hash function takes an input and it produces an output. But there's a couple of really important properties that distinguish a hash function from other transformations that I might perform on that input. So the first one is that it should be easy to compute. That's important because I want to make sure that it's not particularly hard to compute, doesn't take a lot of uh, computation to compute, but very hard or impossible to invert. So if I start with the output, it should be impossible or very, 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 very difficult to recover the original input. So that's the second property. And the third property is small changes to the input should produce big output changes. So if I make a small change to the input to the hash function, the output should change uh, quite dramatically. Let me try to make this a little bit smaller so we can see all of it. OK, so to be easy to compute, hard to invert. So hard to take the output and recover the original input. And small changes to the input should produce big output changes. So let me give you an example of, of actually using a hash function. Um, you can do this inside your virtual machine if you have MD5 sum. On Mac, this command is called MD5 for some inane reason. So uh, let me show you sort of how this works. So I can um, do the following. So I'm going to echo the uh, text test. And I'm going to echo it into the MD5 command. And the output of that MD5 command is this hash. So in this case, my input was test. And the output was this hexadecimal string. So MD5 produces 128-bit output. And this is this random string of hex that you see right here. So this is the input, and this is the output. Now, you can see that that command completed quite quickly. And in fact, I can run the same command over larger files. So let's do this. I'm going to run it over the entire Firefox update. And that also completes pretty quickly. And you can see in this case, it shows me the file name and then the hash for the file name. So in this case, the contents, the input is the contents of this file, and the output is this hexadecimal string. Now, let's verify that a small change to the input produces a big change to the output. So let's say that rather than test, I make it capital T. And look, so this is fairly similar to this. All I did is change one character, but the output here if you look, that's 2205, blah, 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 blah. This is F766, blah, 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 blah. So the output strings are totally different. The other property that I can't really you know, prove to you using this example is that given this, so if you just gave somebody this information, it would be very, very, very difficult for them to recover the original input. Now, MD5 as a hash function has been around for a while. We've actually discovered quite a few vulnerabilities with it. But there are newer versions of hash functions that pretty much do the same thing, but do it better. So what's another uh, use for this hash function? So let's say that I have a server that people need to be able to log into. And I'm using a password-based login scheme. Let's, and so somewhere I need to store the passwords, because if I don't store the passwords, the people can't log in. I can't check to make sure that the password that they gave me is correct. However, I may not want to store the passwords in clear text. So, so if your password was foo, I may not want to have foo written down in a file somewhere because if someone gained access to that server, they could get that file and they would know your password and they would be able to use your password not only to log into that site, but maybe to log into other sites that you use the same password for. So instead of storing your password, I can store a hash of your password. So I take your password, and I compute that hash function, and then I store that in a file. So why is this better? Well, when you log in, I can check your password and make sure it matches. So I take your password, I perform the hash, and I check to make sure the hash that uh, is produced matches the hash that I have. But if somebody breaks into my machine and steals that copy, that file that has all the password hashes written down, they don't know your password. 
So they can't log into that machine or they can't necessarily log into other machines. All they know are the hashes of the passwords. They don't know the passwords themselves. So hashes are used all over the place. They're used to, you may have seen on certain websites, hashes provided to uh, verify the integrity of large files. So that's another thing that you can do with a hash. If I have a big file and I want to make sure that you downloaded the file correctly, on my website, I'll put the hash of the file, and then once you've completed downloading the file, you can compute the hash yourself and make sure that they match. So that's another use for hash functions. Hash functions are really useful. They're used a lot. They can also be great ways to figure out keys to store data when you're programming and other things, uh, but a really important part of cryptography as well.